Hello and welcome to the Sheep Seats. I am your host, Matthew, aka Sheep, aka Dark Sheep. We are here. The season has started. We have baseball games. And tonight I am joined by uh, actually someone that I just met tonight. Chris, welcome. Hey, what's going on? Uh, yeah, so we are actually 20 minutes away from uh, uh, the lock on this Diamond After Dark slate. So we're just going to start ripping some drafts uh, on this slate. And we're just going to hang out and chat and uh We'll, be, we'll get going here. Um, so first off, uh, uh, welcome, Chris. Uh, so you uh, reached out to me. You know, you you came on to Underdog. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I guess when did you first start playing on Underdog? Uh, so I started I started drafting for the NFL 22 season. It was, yeah. it was last year, 23. What was it? Okay, so yeah, 2022. I drafted a bunch of teams on, on underdog and I didn't really get the whole concept of the big contest until the season was already in and in, in like in session, but I had, I drafted a few teams, whatever, but then it came to the next season and like, I kind of went a little crazy. Like I drafted a lot of teams and uh, I hadn't, I hadn't actually gotten into the MLB yet. So I had drafted once there was like one team that I had gotten. It was in like the top, the top, like six, 700 of the best ball mania. Yeah. And I was like, Oh man, I got to do this for baseball now. Like if this is, this is the way it's playing out and I'm just casually playing right now. And, you know, I just want to put my hat in the ring. Bam. I'm going to definitely mess with this. And then that's when I'm like scouring around, just looking over YouTube, like just trying to like, see if anybody's into it. You guys are the only ones that were doing like anything related to best ball. And I was like, this is amazing. I'm like, you know what? I don't see the the viewership. You guys aren't too crazy yet. I'm like, maybe we could like, you know, do some joint shit. Excuse my language. It's something joint, joint Sorry. venture, and um, and just make sure that it's uh, you know, it's something that that could could build not just the um the community, but also build it for interest in baseball. Because like some people, like uh, it's hard for them to keep up with with you. Know, All right. Uh. Seems like we lost Chris here. All right, I was good. I didn't know we were cut off. Oh yeah, we're back. You're back. Yeah. Uh, so we took Otani there. Uh, Dodgers are kind of one of Dodgers and uh, Diamondbacks are kind of the premium teams tonight on this uh, on this group of teams. Um, yeah. So I've just been taking as many Dodgers as I can at the start, and then filling in an, another team to go with them. That's kind of been my strategy on this slate. Um, I doubt Freddie gets back to us. Hopefully he does. That'd be a nice little combo. Probably unique. Um, so, yeah, you g- came in. Uh, there he goes. Uh, but we will take Will Smith um, to pair him with Otani. Uh, I do like to make, like, three-man stacks and two-man stacks uh, on these slates uh yeah billy joe uh is with you here that uh you know best ball can get people back into baseball i think uh as as like kids people grow up like there's there's like this big population of people that uh like baseball or had some like attachment to it as a child whether like their family had a team there's a local team or they played it uh, in, in some, you know, in some way or another, uh, and then just like, it seems like most people fall off of like actually watching baseball. I don't know if, if you, you feel like that's a common occurrence for people, you know, absolutely. I mean, that, I mean, I even seen a, a YouTube video that, uh, that showed like, uh, I w- it was like a certain time in the 2010s. You know, I would say around 2007, 2008, it kind of like it kind of went in a different direction. Baseball, uh, of course, people were still watching it and stuff. But I would say that you know, up until the Mets made the World Series in 2015, like it was like a it was like a, a dark area, like a dark age, like as far as my viewership even. And I love baseball. Yeah. You know, and and I and I would say that because 2006 was a big year for the Mets. They were 
you know, in NLCS with the Cardinals. Yeah. Where where you where are you on this? Okay, so you picked uh you picked Bobby Miller. Yeah, so I went and took a picture because I was gonna build yeah. up Cleveland uh group after I took Jose Ramirez as my second team. And mm-hmm. the uh their ADPs were such that I wanted to grab a I knew that they would still be around, so I took a pitcher. So we'll take um I think most people would take Josh Naylor, so we're gonna make it a little bit different and go with Andres Jimenez. Um, I actually picked Jimenez too as my last pick on the as the flex pick. That's funny. Okay, nice. So, um, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna ask you. You uh, s- did you play any you know regular season long fantasy baseball at all? Like, are you're talking about like regular? Like yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, make yeah, moves every sit. week. Yeah, and, start, yeah, start, yeah. I'm in, a, I'm in a league like that with some of my friends I grew up with. Sure, but so. you know, like when we when we first were talking, I know you said that you know this is a lot more preferable for you the the best ball format. You like that more? Absolutely. But I mean, it's something that first of all, I, I mean, I was saying to even. Even uh, your your co-host, when I have spoken to him, I was like, Pirates, for instance, that's a team that you want to take some stock into as far as for the division, right? So it's like you're buying stock into players. It's a stock market, even best ball. So that's that's where I see it as like, even if somebody is just looking for, let's say, uh, you know, a, uh, an opportunity to grow their money in a way. It's like you're buy, if you can buy if you can see the future on a player or a certain group of players, you combine them in best ball, and then bam, that's an opportunity to to win one of these contests. Like that's that's really like my logic, even like to like yeah. the larger larger audience people who have like you know, if they have people like Cameron and Mace doing the sponsors, having them as a sponsor like underdog, I mean, it's like one way to explain it because all they have them doing is the pick them stuff. It's like they're wasting a whole harvest and all these people who are putting money on parlays they can be putting that money on hey put up put it on 20 30 of these best ball manias put it on some of these put it for nba even you know so it's yeah. just something that i feel like if people really understood the concept of what we're cultivating right now it, it'd be it would even it would be even busier even after the fact because dfs is something that you know i i knew people who were who were messing with it too so yeah. I mean, do, doing this is probably more fun anyway, because opposed to doing the the budget, you're competing against X amount of people in this, and you know the pot is two thousand. Yeah. So. so yeah, yeah. So this 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 is the question here. Uh, I think the rain, from what I saw last, the rain is slowing down in this in that game. Uh, just whether the field conditions are good, I haven't seen any updates uh, lately. Are... I'm not seeing any updates on the weather. Sort of just hoping that it, it goes off. Uh, okay. Uh, otherwise, we might be uh, burning a little bit of money tonight. Um, yeah. Uh, so the other thing yeah. that uh, I think is pretty interesting, you know, you said you love baseball. Um uh, the, you know, the other thing is that you're actually like, uh, involved with baseball in a way, uh, doing photography. So tell me about, tell me about that. Yeah. So basically I would go, I would say from about 2015, I, I would, like, I would take pictures of like, you know, models and stuff like that as well. Uh, so it got to like, you know, 2015, 16, uh, you know, getting better equipment, uh, I was taking pictures at the games here and there. wasn't I, I wasn't going that much. Like you know, 2015 was probably like that season that that it ticked up a little more. Then uh, 20, 2017, 18, like I, I was like kind of seeing that like I was being around the stadium and I was like starting to grow more of a, a love of photography with the baseball. I reached out to to Dominic Smith, uh, from, yeah, who played who played for the Mets at the time. And I was, and I told him like, may, like we could maybe we could work together, like you know, doing like like workout stuff during the off season, stuff like that, just like hype up videos, whatever. 
So he was he was actually he was for it. He he wanted to do that, and then he had some he had some things that happened that season. He started in AAA, got called up. Season was complicated, but we kept in touch, and I reached out to him during the off season of twenty nineteen into twenty nineteen. So eighteen going to nineteen, uh, ba- basically like we we worked together during that that Christmas uh, holiday time. Uh, that like started me working with like his foundation, Baseball Generations. So that was that was a cool thing. I got to work with you know a lot of people that were coming up. Uh, one of them, Termar Johnson uh, from the Pir- Pirates organization, uh, yeah. Drew Jones, uh, Andrew Jones' son. Uh, like you know, just people that people know. There's a lot of kids. There's one of them. Uh, he's a catcher on uh, St- Stanford. There's a lot of a lot of cool people I got to meet like from baseball, like just casually. Like just taking pictures for their their foundation, they have a event like an all star game. Yeah, but over the time, like he he just treated me like family. Like I went to a lot of the games, took a lot of pictures and stuff, did a lot of stuff for him, and then over that time, built a lot of you know relationships with people, and um, basically at one point, my my friend Tim Ryder, he's not a friend, he became a friend. He uh he was a, he's a writer. He covers the Mets. He knew somebody who was who was uh, covering covering the mess who needed a photographer yeah i got the credential and then bam like i'm shooting and uh that season the first season of 21 2021 after the covid season yeah because like in between that time it was just it was just like a bunch of craziness going on yeah. from like 19 20 21 it was like a it was like a past life almost <laughs> exactly like all the precautions that we had to take you know even being in contact with them so uh but also, I once I started shooting, being on the field and everything, that it was pretty crazy. Uh, there was there was a 9-11, 9-11 game. The uh, twenty years after nine eleven, I was on the field, like taking pictures oh. of like Mets and Yankees or everything. That was pretty special. And then a week later, they had a fireworks night where Hobby Baez was on the field with his kid, and I took a picture of him, and the picture like blew up and got on ESPN and everything. Yeah, I so, think. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah. That sounds so, familiar. Yeah, it was it like end of 2020, 2021 season. So it was like something that it got Mets Instagram, a lot of places. I gave him I actually gave him a, a printed picture and a and a um, frame and everything. Gave it to him right before he went to the Tigers and everything. That was the end of that season. So it's just uh yeah, it's been really cool like to connect with the game pers- on a personal level. And that's why I was saying before even this, like the the, the fan part is kind of like I, I think of this as more like a we're all human beings. So even the fantasy part, I try to think of it in that perspective too. I think of the hungriest players are, are the players who are the have who have the most exposure. The guys within, you know, years one and four of their service time, even. Like I don't mean to I don't mean to put them in a box, but and guys that are in contract years. You know, think of it in a personal level because it's a full season kind of thing. And teams that are going to be in the hunt, teams that need to play out of their mind, like team like the Mariners, for instance. Mariners always come up crazy from July, August. They have the most exciting games. You know, last night, for instance, a game like that, they played the Red Sox in August, they're winning that game. So I just, there's so many different layers of, of baseball being a part of it and then being a part of the DFS and then fantasy and everything else. And just to speak to you today, is pretty crazy. Yeah. Like everything that's going on. Yeah. That, that is a, a crazy story that, you know, you just sort of started doing it and like one, you know, you're reaching out and you made that connection and it's, it's grown. That's awesome. Um, so I, it's interesting that you, t- you know, you talk about, um, you know, the, the seeing, meeting the people, the people, not players, you know, they're, they're people first and then players second. And you get to meet that, um, you know, and for me, uh, sitting behind my computer and spreadsheets and projections, it's, it's pretty easy to forget that. Um, so like, um, talking, uh, Another example, uh, a friend of the show who does some other of his own content, uh, 
he had a, you know a former friend who was a major league player and he had very similar things to say about you know his recommendations of players was based on uh the the people and the athletes that the players were not you know necessarily the data and and the 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 you know me hiding behind my spreadsheets i mean it's it's a mix of both i think that the the bit the major change that's going to happen like for instance like uh, one of the things this also makes it very human right they talk about david stearns somebody you know personally not even like a personal per like but as far as a fan of the brewers right yeah you you know of stearns right this very very good person like you know as you can tell like from the, his interviews everything right yeah the first person he actually mentioned in his introductory interview for the mets happened to be my cousin who he who hired him as his first job in baseball gary perone and i'm just like this all it all hits full circle with baseball and it's been happening forever every every story like one of the first books i read as a kid was jackie and me and it was a story of a kid that was in the clubhouse he was a clubby for the dodgers and it was like a it was like a dream that he was having or whatever and he yeah. was with jackie robinson everything so it's like no matter how far you go like even as a child baseball has that magical thing about it that it even you're just sitting there watching an introductory press conference and then bam it smashed you in the face like how 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 much it hits home no matter how far you go from it i mean even when you're disconnected like i'm at my job completely forgetting about like being involved in the photography whatever because you just got to make money you got to survive yeah. so like i'm just saying that all these things at the personal perspective even the people that work for the teams as far as how they delegate who they're going to sign it's a mix of the the future of baseball has to be a mix of the personal with the analytics because they all are relevant your yeah. spreadsheets your spreadsheets mixed with the personal perspective is is pretty much a cheat code in it in itself just that you're you're tying it together in a way that people are splitting in half and this is not just in in sports it's in life in general it's like we're we're too much uh centric in one direction and if we could we could we could kind of like get in the middle of that venn diagram and, and get get to work that's what this conversation was always going what i wanted it to be about was like whatever your expertise is mixed with my expertise and then bringing in writers and bringing in people I know and people, you know, to connect, it's like meeting of the minds kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you said a lot there, but it, it is yeah, definitely the, the David Stearns thing, like uh, just kind of change. You just see how he changed the mentality of everyone involved with the Brewers. Like, uh, like, and maybe like the result is when they started winning more, but the result, you know, you can look at it and say, Oh, they're winning more. That's why the culture changed. But really it starts first at the, the people level. Mm -hmm. um, and like, you, you could see that just like, I mean, outside of the, the crappy Ryan Braun stuff that kind of came up during, during part of it. Um, but like, um, yeah, so like, that's why I was surprised, uh, like even more so surprised uh, that he didn't uh, get Craig Council to come out there with him because it seemed like there was that bond there. Um, but um, obviously we know what happened there. <laughs> I think it, I think it was most, more than anything. It's, it's one of those things where those two people did so much together that they don't want to seem like married to each other as far as their names. True. So to have an opportunity to walk to both, both franchises as far as dream jobs, Council, you know, he has an opportunity to bring the Cubs to not, not even, I wouldn't even say even World Series, but being what the Brewers are and then not being such an up and down team. Right. And I think the Brewers are still very capable of doing that. It's just they, they need a couple more. Like if they 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 really were honest with themselves, and they and they they sold off, got, like really pressed the reset button and let let the young guys you know kind of take take the lead, somehow some way you know offload Yelich all that, like you're you're opening a window where now you're playing with 
the Pirates window. Yeah. Uh, opposed to trying to compete with the Cubs and even the Reds. The Reds are, are, are jumping the gun on their window, too. Because if, if you look, two years ago, they started the season like like 2-15, and 15, some crazy record. Yeah. So it's like, if they, like McCutcheon was even saying about the Pirates, and this is the one thing that the Cardinals, you know, they're they're like a team that just stays there. But I was I would just say that the Pirates, McCutcheon was saying that this team is way better than people are, are calling them. And this is two years ago before he signed last year. Because I've just been reading up. Because I've been doing as much research. Because I don't want to just say, hey, the Pirates, I feel like they're going to win the division. But if you bring up some of the people that they have in their system and all that, and I think that with the same thing with the Brewers, the 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 team that they built and and even the atmosphere you're you're in milwaukee yeah yeah i mean i've never been to to a brewers game but to watch a brewers game is a different experience it feels like a college college ba- ba- basketball game in a baseball stadium that's interesting uh yeah there's definitely like it is it, there's a party going on outside the stadium the the tailgate culture is real there and uh obviously uh the 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 drinking and the you know whatever is its own discussion but uh the and the the team benefits from people being excited to be there too i mean you, you look at a lot of well partially what a lot of the teams are trying to do is like build uh you know build around their stadiums now and like build these like uh, sort of like small business not small but village business areas Make a little village yeah. right yeah and um now they have red Sox. yeah i i yeah i've not been there but I, I have been to wrigley once and that was like that was like that you know everything around the game was part of the game the and and the businesses survived uh based on that too so and and that atmosphere kind of gets created um like um I went to um, I've, I've been to the Cleveland Stadium too, and that's sort of, that's downtown, that's in a city area, but you know that didn't have that same sort of atmosphere as uh, as Chicago did. Yeah, no, I mean some of these some of these areas, it's like a baseball town is is really serious. I mean, even go by Yankee Stadium, it's different. It's a, it's a different energy, like opposed to City Field. Like it's just like an off place. Yankee Stadium is in dead center of a lot of different action and stuff like that. So I, I could imagine the same thing being there for the Brewers. I mean, have like a, they have like a village over there, right? Uh, no, it's actually just kind of a bunch of parking lots around it. It's right. right. It's, it's so away it's a super from tailgate. It, I mean, it's also Green Bay. Like that's the same way. Yeah, yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the so, same thing. The, you know the tailgate the big party around mm-hmm. this is your second team that you drafted or welcome dale well no i did i did mix in an arizona san francisco stack while we were discussing uh yeah and we're getting another dodger stack um and probably get another I, i'm i'm maybe i'm jumping the gun but i am worried about joe musgrove right now and where his his season is at he's he was you know he hasn't looked great and like i was still drafting him in the season long stuff because i think he'll get it figured out he's just that sort of guy yeah but i do want to take advantage right now that he might be down a little bit so i have been he is going against the giants tonight so i'm probably gonna put giants with with dodgers here I also don't think too many people are drafting Giants in general for this contest. Yeah, no. The crazy thing about the the Giants is they won't hit for seven innings and then score five, six runs in the last two innings. So, I mean, people don't think of the Giants as an offensive team, but they're bringing in – they brought in Soler. Yep. And and then – I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Jung Ho Lee is, is playing right now, right? Yes. Yep. I he's think so. I actually, I think actually he's, yeah, he did get drafted. Uh, so maybe he, yeah, 
So we're going to take Nick Pavetta here. Um, I don't know if you did. And then we are going to take Solaire. Um, I, uh, I don't know if you looked into Nick Pavetta at all this year, if, if you're a believer in the second half stuff from last year. I mean, he he just in that Eflin. He's in that group of like Zach Eflin, like Kyle Gibson, like just guys, just guys, you know, guys that just throw. You know, like I'm not, I'm yeah. not like I, I don't want to down them because really they 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 have consistency. Like I say, well, how long, how many years has has this guy been like Nick Pavetta? Have he's really just been out there, like just pitching. I mean, for better or worse, like it's maybe four ERA, something like that in that range. But how how good was he last year? Like in the second half, I wasn't even aware. Yeah, he well, he got demoted to the bullpen from having from the first half, and then he made some changes to his uh, pitching mix, and uh, he added a pitch with a bunch of movement and uh, sort of he looked good in the bullpen. They put him back as a starter, and then. Uh, yeah, now he, his like his cost this year went way up. Like you get him, yeah. he wasn't even drafted every time last season, but this year he he started at the end and kind of moved up to the you know three quarters of the way through the draft where he was going. One thing I was gonna say was I I drafted him in the the season long uh, draft sit league I'm in. I only have one of them, and uh, funny thing is I was looking. I'm like, why is this guy's ownership so high? It was like sixty-seven percent on ESPN, right? And then the other, the other thing I was gonna say was that my guy last year that I was really tuned into was Cole Reagans. Yeah, like that was like I picked him up in fantasy, and I was just rolling with him. He got me into like the championship because he he was just really he was dominant. So uh, it was uh, it was sad to see them actually lose yesterday, but my friend said. Uh, for for people to to throw uh to throw something on Royce Lewis at home run first at bat hits a home run, then he gets hurt. Second at and, bat he gets hurt. Yeah, and then I'm like, and then I just run to go see like how much uh how how much how much percent uh, I had of uh of Royce Lewis, and then who else got hurt yesterday? The pitcher Justin Steele. Justin Steele, right? Nine percent. <laughs> I was like, damn. And you know what the funny thing is though, like. You know, the last week I started going crazy with the with the drafting too. I I mean I'm talking about I'm taking like eighty eight it's eighty eight teams. So but for for the um for that the dinger one. Yeah. So I'm like I'm like, damn, I'm I'm when when I see when I heard Justin Steele got hurt, I'm like, damn, that's a name that I, I was looking at every time I was drafting, I'm like, he, he's come back from an injury, come back. Don't believe in it yet. I was like, I'd rather draft Cole later. I was trying to draft Cole late, later in drafts as much as possible. Because I'm like two months out of six months is not really that much. It's like it's not it's not drafting Jacob Degrom like in the last yeah. round. Like I don't know how you feel about drafting Paul Skeens at the end of the draft. Like uh, I was I was not in on Paul Skeens. Uh, my guy uh, at the end of the draft there uh, was uh, Walker Bueller because I felt like he was coming. He was being way undervalued for uh, the potential. And I, it's funny because he's a, he's been a guy that I've always thought was uh, overrated in general. Mm-hmm. Just some of the the Dodgers hype on him. Of so course, it that felt value. weird. Yeah, it felt weird to change <laughs> change my mind on him this year. Yeah, we got some teams in there. Um, uh, yeah, so. The, I'm sort of interested to know a little bit more uh, about the photography photography stuff. Um, so, like, how how many games do do you get to attend? And like, how is I'm just interested in like how you separate being a baseball fan, or, or maybe mm-hmm. being a baseball fan makes the photography easier. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm just interested in like how that that you know how you how you do that as a job and you know that's something a lot of people mm-hmm. do as a hobby or uh, you know they, they would love to be able to take pictures of their favorite thing whatever that thing is yeah so so basically uh 
as far as as mixing the uh, the baseball fandom to the uh, to the photography, it, I got I kind of got like crash courses. My first season shooting, actually the the series, the the 9-11 20 year anniversary series uh, for the Yankees and Mets, Lindor hit three home runs that night uh, on the Sunday night baseball game, and uh, I was actually happy that I got a shot during Lindor doing the flex when he hit his third home run. And the funny thing is, I'm just happy I'm getting this shot. It's a legendary shot. Like, I already knew it in the moment, right? And I'm like, I'm like, yes, or whatever. And I'm like putting my hands up. And one of the elder photographers pressed me about it. And it was like, you can't celebrate. And I, I was just telling, I was like kind of disturbed because I'm like, I'm not, I'm not celebrating. I'm celebrating the shot. Right. So it was like from then on, it was always instilled in me like, yo. Don't even look at the players like that. Don't even like take pictures, but don't don't observe the dugout. Don't shoot in the dugout really like that. Even though I can, doesn't mean I, I should. You know what I mean? They're they're human beings. They need a minute to to clear their heads. And the more that the New York media is, is I'm I'm one of the New York media. If I'm doing that, it's like it's like really something that I know better. I should do better. So even my friend told me yesterday, like do the right thing. And I asked him, was like. Was that was that just uh, something else? He's like, no, I tell everybody that do the right thing. Like, you know, we just got to do the right thing. And and as far as photography, I try to just do the right thing. As far as giving them their personal space, like Juan Soto was one of the coolest people in baseball that I've met. Where his rookie year, I, I um, I sent him a picture, and he put on his story. He he autographed it, like, and and also the picture that he used on his Instagram page where people were saying that he was going to go to the Mets when he was requesting a trade. It's, uh, it's crazy that I had taken that picture. And then like, it's just so, it's so crazy how like over time, like the whole, the whole picture of what you're doing, it kind of opens up. So like over time, like you're not just looking at it from a baseball fan perspective. You're looking as like, I hope that person's like, it's they're go They're okay. You know what I'm saying? Because of course they're going to make four hundred million dollars, but like at the end of the day, like you know that you're benefiting from this whole thing. So the best thing is to always be mindful of the human being that you're 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 basically the what would they call it the uh, the subject. Be yeah. be mindful of the subject and treat them the way that you would want to be treated. You know, and how you would want your work to be treated. So that's how I kind of separated it. And I get my fandom out. I play MLB the show. And I'll go to the stadium acting like it doesn't happen. I'll be in the cafeteria. I'll see, uh, you know, people like David Cohn, uh, Keith Hernandez, Ron Darling, you know, calmly. You know what I mean? They're just they're, they're human beings. And, and it's like I try to just make sure I remind myself of that. And, and that we're all, we're all, we all have blood that's flowing through our veins. But at the same time, it's still... You got to see it like the cool part is you get to see it in a picture of like, okay, um, it's like a, it's like a tour. Like if you look at the Dodgers, for instance, right. It's like they're going on tour around the country when they, when they go on the road. Sure. And, and when you see the Dodgers faithful behind their dugout and how supportive they are, and you see the people that come with the Dodgers around the country, it's just a presence that you don't feel with other teams. And it makes you appreciate baseball in a way that, like, you know, I will over time I'll appreciate basketball and hockey. I have as well, but I haven't haven't really because hockey isn't as high profile as the Dodgers are, not one team. So like, it's really just like the Dodgers are at a different echelon of of like fandom that you begin to see the importance of what you do because the Dodgers capture things in more of a movie star like kind of thing. You you watch backstage for the Dodgers. You ever seen that? No, I've not. They have. They have like basically like a whole reality show for the Dodgers. Though that might be part of the reason why the Dodgers don't succeed as well as they should in the playoffs and stuff. Because there's just so much, there's so much going on for the Dodgers. They treat it like it's like a big, big pr production, you know. And yeah. I think that in if we're talking if we're talking about the human perspective of baseball, it's like if you're trying to capture everything with a camera, whether it be New York, Los Angeles. 
It's like if you look at Texas, they're looking at protecting their athletes. And I feel like that's the number one thing that, that's going to make a player great is how much an organization looks to protect them first. You look at the the, the Rangers. You haven't heard one bad thing about them throwing out a hundred and something million dollars on DeGrom or trading for Max Scherzer, giving up Luis Angel Acuna and getting back Scherzer and getting a quarter of a season from him in the last, you know what I mean? The Rangers just won the World Series. Yeah. So, like, there, there's something to that. Like, you look at the organizations that when the, when the Rangers came in the city field in 22, by the way, about how many games I've shot, right? Uh, in 2022, I shot about 85 games overall, like between the playoffs and the right, the regular season. Uh, Cause I was, I was also shooting the Yankees, but I, I was shooting the full season of the Mets 23, like the Mets, Mets had a rough year. And like, I started to get like, you know, my professional side, like my work side in order. Mm-hmm. So I was like trying to just time management and also energy management. Cause it's hard work. Yeah. Photography, like, you know, this moment right now I cherish because I, I know I worked hard to even be able to speak to you and, and have something to really say, some, say something about it. Yeah. It's carrying heavy equipment. It's traveling on the train. Like I don't have a car at this moment to drive around and do all that stuff. So you're commuting X amount of hours, come back late times, like to even get to 2019. Like there was times I was coming from the Bronx while I was staying for a while, coming from there, having to go in the morning. You know, and I'm doing all this. I'm buying my tickets. You know, what I mean, this is before you know I met Dom, so it was like a lot of just out of pocket stuff, traveling for spring training, out of pocket. So I invested heavily into this, basically off of passion. Yeah. So, I mean, I get paid. I've gotten paid for a lot of gigs, probably off of the strength of my work, but I have never been paid by anybody in baseball to this day. People have given me things, but I'm not. I'm talking about actual monetary numbers. I've been paid so much more in other places than baseball, but it's given me something that I can, money can't buy. Yeah, like you know, what I mean, to, to put me in those rooms and 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 to do it in a way where it's respected, and I'm not sitting over there looking for an autograph. I never look for a picture. Never look for an autograph. People get Jazz Chisholm jumped in a picture with me at, at one of the events. You know what I'm saying? Like, and this this somebody every time I look at MLB the show, I'm like, yo, this is one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. Never mind in sports, never mind in a famous person. One of the coolest people on earth. You know what I'm saying? And that's why he is who he is. Because there's certain people who just radiate different energy. And like even you, like calm dude, relaxed, but you radiate a certain energy that like you, you want to keep going with this even after the draft season's done. Yeah. For so sure. That's what takes you to the next level. And I really appreciate you even having me on for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. I'm I'm glad to have you here. Um, you know, you talk about the Dodgers. Um, and a few years ago, you know, I my aunt had some friends come into Milwaukee just just to watch the Dodgers. Like they planned a trip to do other stuff in the area, but you know, they never would have came to Milwaukee. It's not on. It's not a lot. A lot of people's top travel destinations, but they came to because they wanted to watch the Dodgers play, and you know. A new stadium and you know it was really nice like I, they uh we got some tickets and we went as family with them and you know a little smack talk and all that but we had we had a lot of fun um but yeah they they definitely travel a lot more than you expect um you know in the midwest you have you know in in milwaukee it's interesting when the when they play the, the cubs, cubs yeah the cubs. even they, when they come to city field man the end of matt harvey i'll keep going you keep going i'll tell the story after Oh no! I was just gonna say they. It's. I mean, the joke is that it's Wrigley Field North when, when it comes yeah. time to, uh, you know, they're half half and half Cubs. Like at some point, uh, the Brewers. Like it's funny because the Brewers uh, increase the parking rates on those games because they know <laughs> just how busy they are going to be, uh, and you know how many people are going to be there from uh, just from Chicago. Yeah, no, it's insanity. I actually watched the Cubs Cubs Brewers game in Milwaukee last year, a couple of them, because they were just amazing games. Like some of the games Brewers Cubs last year, some of the best baseball, and it's why you love baseball, especially with the pitch clock and everything. The sped up game, like it's like it's like watching a game on ecstasy. 
<laughs> honestly. Or like even even like an acid trip almost to watch baseball sped up. Because it's just a it's a trippy game. That's why there was a pitcher who literally threw a no hitter on acid. Baseball <laughs> is a trippy sport. Like if you really think about it. And the one thing I was gonna say about the Cubs is that they, they travel so well that there was a start uh in twenty eighteen, I believe it was. Uh yeah. Or even it was twenty seventeen even. It was right it was the year before. It was uh I think the thoracic outlet year for Harvey. But the Cubs fans, they were just showering Rizzo. Like he hit a home run to start the game. And this is the last year of that Cubs that the last couple of years of that Cubs era. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it was the year after they won the World Series. So the the Cubs, I would say, travel just as good as the Dodgers. I would say they're just they're even even as far as when they come to City Field, those two teams, their presence is felt. Padres when they won the the it's the series against the Mets. There was a whole there was a whole section, that was straight Padres, and it was not the family, it and it you know it was a bittersweet moment, because you know of course. Deep down, you would want the Mets to win because it would keep you shooting the games because you want to see the Mets win the World Series. If I yeah. could have been there to shoot, shoot, I mean, God, God will not have to, to take pictures of them winning the World Series. But the, the time when they had the best chance to win the World Series in the last X amount of years, I was on the field taking pictures of the introductions and everything. Juan Soto on the Padres, Machado. I just wish Tatis was there, but I'm saying like it was a, a star studded moment. Like and, and some of this baseball stuff, even though it's not as popular as it used to be, all it's gonna take is the right setup, just like a stock, you know, hitting its move to go up or down. It's just the right pattern in the charts of this of this life stuff. And you could see some crazy stuff happen in baseball in the next five years. Yeah, and that the other thing is I I don't know that it needs to be the most popular thing, right? Like the way that things have separated, like in, you know, people have access to everything like in their home on the internet right now. So like, you know, if, if they're not, not into baseball, they don't have, it doesn't have to be the biggest thing ever. As long as there's still a passionate, like, and the history of baseball is not going to like kill it. Like that's why like people say, Oh, baseball's dying. And I, I don't, well, I don't get that because there's still just as many or there's just as much passion in the people that enjoy it uh, and, and play and, you know, work in it. So, like, who cares if it's not the biggest sport in America anymore? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it, it it doesn't have a shot to, to, to match football. But I think that in reality, I, the contracts that are coming in and, and where the AAVs are going, it's important that people understand that their job if they're going to be a fan of this sport and they understand the history of this game and uh, what it's done for America as a whole, it's important that before you're, you're, you're looking to, to uh, throw, you know, as much support into the NBA or other sports, it's important to understand that if you, if you, if you understand like, you know, the magnitude of what baseball can bring on a worldwide scale, you know what I mean? Cause this, there's so many things that have happened over the history of the world since baseball has been around that baseball has been a part of in, in the history, like in history books. Yeah. So, I mean, even in this time, we're talking about KBO, Korea. We're talking about other countries. It's like the, the more that America is forward in these things, the more that, you know, that it, it stirs the pot in the world. And then it doesn't have to be the most popular sport in America. But you see how popular it is for Dominicans. You see how crazy it gets in Lone Depot Park. With now they're putting the instruments in the stadium, yeah. it's gonna be a huge advantage for the Marlins. It's like, so I, I really think that it's just a matter of stirring the pot and knowing that that pot could get it could t- it could be a good it could be a nice nice meal for us to serve, you know. And, and for us doing what we do. That's what I'm saying. It's like we don't have to sell people on it, but we can at least lay the plate out and put it on on the table a lot nicer. Yeah. And that's where baseball has to come in. Like, I feel like 
one of the reasons why I've taken more initiative with traveling, spending my own money and going and working with these people is because I understand the initiative. It's not just making black kids play baseball. It's about understanding that it's about all colored people from impoverished areas having the opportunity to show what they can because there's people in other countries that are, are using a, a paper bag or anything they can to play the game of baseball and they understand that this could take them out of their situation and it makes the game more exciting them having that initiative yeah. so it's like if kids understand that like it doesn't have to come from best ball but it has to come from like an overall initiative from our age group that we seen what it was like because how old are you uh, i'm 36 yes yeah, so i'm uh, yeah i'm 33 so we're in that range where the 90 i would say the 95 96 season to about 2007 was a magical time in our life as far as watching baseball you know yeah. those those that's a special time like no matter what the strike did and the, and the lack of interest that it changed it's like at the end of the day that it's not that we're trying to recapture that but there's just so much more technology and so much more uh so many more things that that can can stir the pot and, and make baseball special that's it and changing the rules all the time and and all the things that they do it kind of i feel like it's counterproductive more than than certain simple things that they could change sure and you talk about like kbo and everything but like just look at the world baseball classic last year that was mm-hmm. That was awesome. Like, and like increasing coverage of that sort of stuff, I think would go a long way to just growing the game in general. Um, yeah, I'm with you. Baseball is such a fragile sport that I'm 50 50 on that. Like, there's, there's, um, there's like crazy radio hosts in New York that hate the World Baseball Classic, right? And I'm, I'm half with them because these guys are playing for their country and talking about, that they care more about winning the World Baseball Classic than winning the World Series. That's bad for the brand. We're sure. building a brand here. Like, regardless of if we're a consumer, we have to understand that as content creators or taking pictures or even just loving the game of baseball itself, that the brand itself needs to be protected. So if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, there has to be some sort of protection on the arms that we're putting out there. Like Baseball is already a fragile sport with the uh, Tommy John surgery and all that stuff. And it's just like we always put ourselves in a, in a um, I would just say that is, do you hear the, 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 the radiator? No, no. All right, cool. You're good. Perfect. It's like that we put our, we always putting ourselves in a place of, uh, um, like, it's always an inconvenience to do a lot of the things that they do to grow the game. Like, for instance, you want a pitch clock to speed up the game. Now you're going to have a, a, a laundry list of injuries based off of speeding up the clock and guys not ready to pitch that fast and to, to, to do what they do, throw 95, 100 times plus warm up. You're talking about 145 pitches every time they're going out there and they got to do it in a different way than they grew up doing. True. So, it's like, it's always seems like there. Uh, there was just a certain word that I was saying in my, no, it's in my a, head. It's, but a, it just, it's a trade-off, right? And getting that balance one. right, getting the balance right to you know increasing the speed and protecting the pitchers. Yeah, exactly. And uh, is is there anything else like as far as the, the photography part? you want to get into because i don't, I don't want to let, i don't want to like deviate from any of the no. questions you asked like no make sure i no. properly answer it too no i think i think the last thing i just wanted to you know you talked about uh steel and and reagan's uh just interested to hear who were who are your guys pitching and hitting you know as or teams that you uh felt like you really were drawn to this year uh, as you were drafting well main thing was um a big Hassan Kim fan right um these guys all right so they were three four players that i was keying in on as far as infielders uh instead of trying to chase after the jose ramirez and the freddie freeman and the bobby witt early in the draft or any of the other infielders it was like i would grab like Cattell Marte, 
um, Andre Simenez, Stephen Kwan was an outfielder, but he would be later a later pick. It was like I was trying to grab as like the outfielders because mm-hmm. I mean even you were you guys were saying this is the thing that like main thing I picked up from you guys was that all right there's less outfielders than there are yep. infielders yeah and you just got to go and get your outfielders and then at a certain point I went real extreme with it I'm like all right never mind outfielders infielders how about no pitchers until like the eighth round seventh round mm-hmm. let's wait out that that part of it let's get four infielders four outfielders so then you got two flex position opportunities. Then you go get the pitchers. All the pitchers basically their 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 projection gap is basically two hundred three hundred points. Right. And I started seeing like my projections go from like twenty twenty one to now it's like twenty late twenty twos to tw- into twenty threes. You know, so it's like maybe that doesn't matter, but like I'm starting to see like as far as the overall season, you can grab all the infielders later in that that scope yeah so yeah. i know i know you were asking me about specific players i would say as far as pitchers um i have a lot of yuri perez <laughs> yeah um hopefully he comes back soon how, how long did they have him out uh i haven't seen any updates i think he was playing catch this past weekend mm. if i remember right yeah, not a, the the one thing that that we're starting to see is the the cycle of the 2020 players that were you know some of the players that didn't get to play in 2020 minor league players. Yeah, uh, you're starting to see those players start popping up more and more in the major leagues, um, and I feel like this year is going to be that official year where those players start having like you're going to see like some players that you didn't even like know their name all of a sudden hit 20 home runs, 30 home runs. Just because they didn't get the proper placement in 20 and 21 as far as their teams in the minor leagues. Uh, then also, the, because, because they're, they're having a lot of success with bringing guys up quick, you look at Wyatt Langford, he's already up. How many, I think they said he only played like six or I think they said six minor league games. Uh, I don't know. It's It was small. I think it was like 18, 20, something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just a few. There's a few players that are that could change the whole scope of baseball this year, and it's not. They're names that are not even talked about yet. Um, so, you know, I would just I would just grabbing a lot of like, you know, random names that um, at the end of the draft. But more more importantly, like I feel like the, the highest exposure was Luis Arise, Hassan Kim, and just guys that like are. Maybe they don't have value to you, but they have value to me. Like I'm still, I still love a single. It's still consistent, you know. And a single could bring in two runs, you know. So I mean, the guy doesn't need to hit 40 home runs. Um, yeah, no. I mean, as much as I was, instead of doing the uh, off of the ADP, yeah, I was doing more off of projection and like logic of hunger like service time how long have they been doing it for and what is their real need to really put up another good season christian yelich was a tough one for me it's funny that you're a brewers fan i every time i seen yelich i would say no just for the fact that like all right he had a comeback year last year but how long is that back gonna hold up yeah for sure And do i want to be the one holding that back and this is the same thing I feel like trading options and all that stuff. And then having the option to cash out and betting. Um, it kind of has to, t- you kind of have to carry that over to drafting in a sense that you want to know that like by August, these guys are replaying. Yeah, for sure. And that they didn't miss 30 games in between that time. Yeah. So it's like a lot of these bulky guys like Jordan Alvarez. I'd rather Kyle Tucker. Yeah. And you have those choices to make at 11-12. Do you want 45 home runs, potentially 60 home runs? Or do you want to take Kyle Tucker, who's consistent and is a lanky guy? I mean, and even in the uh, – even tonight, I was going to say, to, is Yaz playing in a, in a, in a, in a, for the Giants still? No, I think – no, he's still hurt. Because Yaz is a clutch player. I mean, I don't. I, I mean, I don't think for best ball he'll be great, but like 
for those daily ones. Yeah. Yaz was great for DFS. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he does get ignored. Um, and, you know, we have yet to see what the Giants, like what their uh, platooning situation is with Bob, Bob Melvin there, how much that was, um, you know, uh, previous manager, how much that is organ- total organization philosophy. But, yeah, there's definitely a chance that uh, we see a different uh, use case for players there this year that um, maybe we get ahead of in daily stuff. Yeah. Um, one person I, I actually noticed yesterday, I didn't know, he uh, they have a communications department for the Mets, right? Uh, for They have a Twitter page, right? So mm-hmm. every time there's a press conference or anything, the people who are in the media, they get sent a notification. So when they were doing a press conference with J.D. Martinez, they put J.D. Davis is going to be in the in the press conference room, <laughs> right? So the funny part is that J.D. was actually very, very kind to me, very nice person because he, he's, you know, they, Dom and him were, you know, they roomed together, you know, and they played for the mess, everything. So, you know, you got to know him. And he's a good person, right? He actually happens to be on the Oakland A's who are always going to be on those late slates. So I don't know if anybody, you know, anybody wants to grab J.D. Davis at last pick utility, but he had a killer year for the Giants last year. Like yeah. At one point in the season, he was doing great. He was batting 300, and the guy he could hit. You, you DH that guy on any team, and at some point in time, he might – he had the highest home OPS for the Mets in 2019 in the history – one of the top OPSs of all time in a single season. So this is – He's one of those guys that, you know, for a stretch of time, he can go off and yeah. give you a bunch of points that you wouldn't get from your star player that you can't get as a last pick on, um, you know, your your DFS when you're doing your, your budget teams or you're doing that. Um, that's just somebody that, that came to mind as far as the A's and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Well, we we are hitting our hour here, Chris. Thank oh, you. This was this was a really interesting discussion. Uh, uh, I know the, we drafted. That wasn't really the focus of it, but uh, really happy to have you on here, um, and really happy for everybody that tuned in tonight. Uh, in the future, I don't really know what's. Uh, don't really have a plan next for next week, but uh, we'll be back. Uh, you know sooner rather than later we'll probably be here next week um uh so yeah uh thanks everybody for watching thanks again chris uh if if people want to check out some of your photography and you know whatever i should have asked i should have done this at the beginning let you uh you know shout out shout out anything that you might want to uh, advertise or get people to follow you yeah i mean my instagram chris simon.m uh and then Insta, uh, for tw- for Twitter X whatever calling it now uh, <laughs> whatever you want for for Chris Simon and uh, you know definitely you know we going we're gonna definitely get up and uh, you know make something happen over the time really appreciate you having me on here so we you know we chop it up talk about this stuff and you know hopefully it's you know start to many other times shout out, shout outs to your 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 show and you know your people as well you know definitely gonna be watching. And uh, and I appreciate you guys, you know, pushing this this along and being being like being at the forefront of this. I don't know if there's anybody else really doing this, and you guys should definitely get your props for that. And as time goes on and best ball for baseball evolves, hope you guys get your flowers, brother. That's the goal. That's the goal. All right, uh, everyone, have a good night, uh, and uh, hopefully your uh, teams keep rolling along this weekend. <laughs>